This is KGW News at Noon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Brenda Braxton. Well, it is May Day and the city of Portland does not want a repeat of the riots and the violence that we've seen in years past. So police are keeping close watch on today's protests. Let's check in with KGW's Christine Pitowanich. She's live along the South Waterfront. Christine, a rally is planned there, what, within the hour? Brenda, that's right. At 1 p.m., we're talking a rally planned here at Elizabeth Carruthers Park. Uh, the group Occupy ICE is expected to show up here for that rally. They've already started to gather, and the plan is to walk down the way to the Immigration Customs and Enforcement Building. And, you know, traditionally, today has been a day to recognize workers, but it's also become a day for people to demonstrate about other issues. When it comes to May Day, Portland has a history. This video was from two years ago when May Day protests turned into a riot. Last year, things were peaceful in the city, and this year, people are hoping for the same at the multiple events planned in Portland. You hope that kind of thing doesn't happen. You know, the business owners downtown didn't have anything to do with the, what the marchers were out there protesting, so I would hope that they would be safe and that would be recognized. And Today, a 1 p.m. May Day rally is set to start at the South Waterfront's Elizabeth Carruthers Park. The plan is to march to the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Building a few blocks away, protesting the building of a wall on the southern border. The group behind the rally? Occupy ICE. While Debbie Sackett, who works in the area, is all for free speech. I support what they're walking for. She hopes it stays peaceful, and others in the area feel the same way. I mean, I'm all for protests because it, if it's peaceful and it gets your point across, cool deal. I mean, the perfect world, that doesn't always happen. So I hope, I mean, I think it's cool if they come in. I hope it's just peaceful. But if it's not peaceful. We just ask that you do it peacefully and legally. And protesters don't follow the law. The city put out a message for them in a recorded video. If you hear a dispersal order telling you to leave, then you should leave immediately. If you remain, you will be subject to arrest. I spoke with one of the organizers of today's event. He says it's part of a national call to action called Block the Wall. And today's event is intended to be peaceful. Uh, there are some students that may also be walking out of class at noon to meet up here for the rally. And a heads up, if you're in Northeast Portland at Holiday Park, there's another May Day planned rally or protest that's supposed to be from 4 to 6 p.m. Back to you. All right, thanks, Christine. Of course, we'll follow today's protests both on air and online. Go to KGW.com or our KGW Facebook page. We have some new information on a panel that fell off OHSU's aerial tram. It crashed onto a bridge and injured a woman back in December. We now know wind and design flaws caused that 35 square foot panel to fall. That's according to an independent engineering report released just today. The report says the carabiner and tether system that was supposed to prevent the panel from collapsing failed and came loose. Tram crews have since replaced that system with an improved version. The report also says winds were gusting up to 38 miles an hour at the time of that accident. Now the tram no longer runs in winds of more than 30 miles an hour. In Washington, D.C., Attorney General William Barr is defending the way he handled the Mueller report. He testified for the first time since that report came out. NBC's Craig Boswell has the details. Attorney General William Barr facing lawmakers for the first time since the release of Robert Mueller's Russia report. It comes amid a heightened level of scrutiny from Democrats after reports of a rift between Mueller and Barr over his summary of the report. The March 24th letter was not a summary of the report, but a statement of the principal conclusions. Barr says he's done his job, receiving and releasing a redacted version of Mueller's 440-page-plus report. Republicans say it's time to move on. For me, it is over. Senate Democrats say otherwise and accuse the attorney general of misleading both Congress and the public and showing favor to President Trump. Contrary to the declarations of the total and complete exoneration, the special counsel's report contained substantial evidence of misconduct. 
Democrats want to know why Barr concluded President Trump did not obstruct justice when Mueller did not make a definitive decision. Disagreement between Maher and Mueller is now front and center. Mueller reportedly wrote a letter to his boss three days after the release saying he mischaracterized his findings. President Trump's own attorney says if Mueller didn't want confusion, he should have made a decision. He was made special counsel to make decisions, and the fact he didn't says to me that Trump was innocent. Craig? It is 12.04, and we are seeing more beautiful blue sky over the Portland metro area today. That is a live look from our Rose City Sky Cam. It's so nice, we could not keep Rod inside. He's soaking up the sun, and you're also looking <laughs> ahead to summer. We are. You know, it's uh, right about 60 degrees outside here at the KGW studios right now. And of course, this is what we've become used to, just the clear blue skies. We're going to get a lot more of this in the days ahead. And now that it is May, as Brenda mentioned, people starting to wonder about summer. So here's the latest. We'll start with the uh, outlook from the National Weather Service. So the map on the left with the kind of reddish orange tones over the entire western U.S. That signifies the Weather Service believes we will be in the above north normal temperature category all of the western U.S. for the months of May, June, and July when you average it out. The map on the right, notice all that green. That's a wet outlook for much of the country, but if you look carefully, you can see a little brown sliver in northwestern Oregon up into western Washington. That would be a dry forecast. So here's what it means particularly for our area. So take a look at this next graphic. What to know? Well, pleasant uh, temperatures I think could hold on all the way into mid-June, so that's some good news. So far, the warmest we've been is 76 degrees. By this time last year, we had been up into the 80s three times already. Uh, number two, I think we really start to see the temperatures rise above normal and start to sizzle in the months of July and August. Um, and those two months alone could come close to producing 20 to 25 90 degree days. Now last year we had 31. That's the most we've ever had. Um, and then we are hoping for at least some decent rain at times in May and June with a very dry July, August and September expected. And of course, Brenda, when, when you hear it, there's a dry summer outlook, keep in mind, a normal summer outlook would be dry for us, right? So it does make it important if we can um, at least get a little bit of rain in the next 60 days before we get into what I think will be rising temperatures in July and August. That's our outlook for now. We posted my entire story on KGW.com, and I urge you to go to our homepage and take a look at it for yourself. Brenda, back to you. Oh, people are going to be reading up for sure. Thank you, Rod. Right now, it is time to talk of Blazers. They're in Denver getting ready to take on the Nuggets in Game 2 of the playoffs. We caught up with them for their final tune-up at Pepsi Center, and that's where KTW's Orlando Sanchez is joining us live. Hey, Orlando. How's it going, Brenda? All well in your world? I can't complain really? out here at a mile high above sea level as the Portland Trail Blazers look to bounce back after getting hit with the first punch against the Denver Nuggets. And as you mentioned, we got a chance to see the team go through shoot around here at the Pepsi Center and work on their game and get a final tune up in before. And we also got a chance to hear from the team at shoot around as well as uh, Portland. They didn't take care of the ball in, in, in game one and couldn't slow down the Nuggets offense. The Blazers are confident and excited to get back to work. But there's some urgency to get a win here tonight and even up the series. It'll be huge. You know, we uh, feel like we can get that done. And, you know, to, to go back home with the series even, you know, we'll be taking away home court. So um, considering how well we've played at home, you know, I think that would be uh, to our advantage. And uh, it would be great to even it up here and, you know, put that pressure on them. I love it. It's Playoff basketball is it's the best time of the year. It's just like, you know, in college during the tournament, March Madness is the best time of the year. And um, anytime it's winter, go home and everybody's playing as, as hard as they can. Denver plays so well at home. The best home team in the regular season. They lost just seven times here. So Portland can't afford to have 18 turnovers result in 23 points and expect to steal a game here. But it would be pivotal if the Blazers were able to get one on the road and even this series up. But the Blazers are, are loose and they're calm and relaxed as we get ready for tonight's game at 6 o'clock here at the Pepsi Center. But expect another close game 
every single game that they've played so far this season. They played five games, and all of them were decided by single digits. Oh. This one feels a lot like <laughs> the rest of them have been so far. Vegas odds makers have the Blazers as four-point underdogs. So it's going to come down to the little details, Brenda. And that's what's going to determine the winner in this one out here in Denver. Back well, to you. I'm glad the Blazers are relaxed because I am a nervous wreck, but can't wait to see your reporting later today. Thanks, Orlando. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Oregonians who shop in Washington may have to start paying sales tax. We want to know what you think about that, so grab your phone and vote in our viewer voice poll. Right now, Oregonians are exempt from paying Washington sales tax on most items, but under this new bill, that would stop. No more deals on the spot. Oregonians would have to apply for a tax exemption with the Washington Department of Revenue. This is not a done deal yet. Governor Inslee still has to sign the bill. So here's our viewer voice question this noon. Should Oregonians pay sales tax in Washington? Go to KGW.com vote or click on the viewer voice tab in our KGW News app. We will reveal your final answers later in the show. And I can't wait to see your smile and laugh and have my best friend back like I Students at Barlow High School are rallying around their friend and teammate Lisa Martin. The star athlete is in a medically induced coma. She was hospitalized last week for a rare autoimmune disease. Lisa's track and soccer teammates are sending messages of hope to her family and her best friend started a GoFundMe account to help pay some of those medical bills. She'll be in the um, ICU, they think, for like a, at least another month. So, and just trying to help out the family as much as I can. She's loved by everyone, and I know that's something everybody says, but she's always, she's always been there for, for me. And I didn't realize how if you'd like to help Lisa's family, we've posted the link to her GoFundMe page on KGW.com. We have a little bit of new information for you about WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. A judge has sentenced him to 50 weeks in prison for jumping bail in 2012. This morning, the judge gave Assange the maximum sentence because of the seriousness of his crime. He hid in the Ecuadorian embassy in London rather than be extradited to Sweden, where he's accused of sexual assault. But his lawyer said he skipped bail because he was really afraid of the U.S. The feds here... They want him stateside so they can prosecute him for publishing secret military documents on WikiLeaks. Also some new details about yesterday's deadly shooting at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Two people were killed when a gunman opened fire on campus on the last day of classes. According to local media, one of the students who died was struck while actually trying to jump on the gunman. The suspect, 22-year-old Tristan Terrell, is in custody now, and people are praising the university for saving lives. It sent out alerts on social media to students and staff. When we trained for this type of an incident, one officer immediately went to the suspect to take him down. The accused gunman faces multiple charges. The university says he used to be a student but withdrew from school.